my goal was to make a very simple character piece of two guys in a very isolated environment. Um, and I, I, I kind of had that concept, but I didn't know what the story was until when I was watching it either way, and I was like, this is perfect for what I want to do. You know that pain is poisonous, right? I knew for a project like this to exist, I was going to have to get people that would probably, be, that, that I would know, you know, that I would have a relationship with so that they would take these risks and they wouldn't, you know, there were no trailers on the movie. There's no place to go. It's just a filthy roll up your sleeves and get dirty and inhale a bunch of ashes for weeks. When you were out here by yourself, didn't you get lonely? I reap the rewards of solitude. Huh? <sighs> I get so horny out here in nature, don't you? Enjoy your hot fish. I always knew that as long as the humor was coming from the situations and the reality of the situations and not ever played as if it was trying to get a laugh, but played for its kind of awkward humanity and could get a laugh, then, then it would work because if it's, it, we, we approached it very emotionally and very dramatically, but then infused some very absurd little qualities of the characters, things that they would say to each other, things that they would do, and you know, that was the idea. What about the equal time agreement? The equal time boombox agreement doesn't apply in this case, all right? That's just for recreation. Oh, come on! Hey, we got a lot of lines to paint, and it's a very long road. I suggest you start the machine and keep it going. OK, Alvin. Yeah? You have your tool belt on backwards. You're either going to murder somebody or you're going to befriend them. So <laughs> yeah, if you're stuck with somebody all day, every day, and that's the only person you get to talk to, uh, it can be a beautiful thing or it can get very ugly. And this movie kind of is the balance of both of those. Hey, you guys got time for a drink? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Here, take that. Thank you. Yeah, let me take your tops off for you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> he passed away so shortly after we wrapped the film, uh, which was very unfortunate. Um, but I met him when I was doing a commercial, uh, I was directing a commercial out in California a few months, a few months before we shot this, and I'd met him, and he'd, you know, he'd, he'd played with Elvis. He was a great musician, and had been around, and uh, just seemed like the right charisma for a, a crazy old man driving a truck down the road. Lance Legau was his name. Nothing but desire, huh? Mm. Mm. You got it. You know what? You shouldn't smoke. Oh, yeah, no, I know it's bad for you. No, I mean, you shouldn't smoke. You look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I like to quietly make things, and, and, and I don't like the big expectations and the burdens of expectations. I like, I like to um, have a project evolve and become what it needs to be rather than have people tell me what it should be. How did you live your life up to this point without knowing how to gut a fish or build a tent or tie a knot? How did you live this long and not kill yourself for being such a boring loser who thinks he's so smart and good at everything? For your information, you're not! I thought that this job would be good for me to figure out a way to be happy with my life. I just need an adventure. 